for someone who's beginning, what do you think is uh, the most important, um, I guess, kind of attitude to have towards someone getting into photography? Well, I think I think the key uh, for someone getting into photography is just to first of all shoot and shoot and shoot and explore and see what you're into, and then develop a portfolio. Not before. Sometimes I think people are always saying, "Oh, you have to have a style. You have to have a style. You have to have a style." But the way to really develop a style is to just shoot and explore and see what comes naturally, instead of artificially saying, "Okay." Um, uh, this is my style or this is my style, you, you know, ahead of time, it has to mature. And I think that just comes from shooting and exploring. Uh, originally, when I started shooting, I, I thought, oh, I'll be a fashion photographer. But my natural inclination was always toward travel. And even when I do fashion assignments, uh, they tend to have uh, a location aspect to them that involves travel. I did years ago a campaign uh, for the Gap, for Gap shoes, and they, they gave me shoes and I got to travel all over the world. And so the elements of travel were in those shots. So there was a natural emergence of, uh, of sort of my personality into those uh, images at, to the fashion style. So I think that's the key thing, is people should really just get out and just shoot and explore and start uh, putting images into maybe you know, three ring binders, or, or now that we have these great books that you can do, you know, online books, um, you know, to put things in a series and, and start developing that. And then as you start to refine your eye, refine your portfolios more and more, uh, because when you eventually do uh, approach clients or magazines or whatever, uh, you do need to have a style to show. You, you don't want to be... Uh, seen as a jack of all trades. That's not how you get jobs. People still want to sort of cubbyhole you into something, but it should be your idea of where you want to uh, go with it first. And then uh, what we were talking about before, uh, w when you approach magazines or, or clients, or I should say definitely magazines, uh, if you could come in with ideas uh, magazines are constantly looking for, for new ideas. Um, and if you could come in and say, hey, I'm going here, uh, and we're talking about travel, I'm going here, and I think this Umbria region of Italy has, you know, the, the best oil, and I want to do something, you know, on, you know, cooking classes there, and oil, and, and, and uh, something like that. Uh, then, you know, or when I did the, in, in Japan, the Japanese hot springs, you know, always looking for something. Um, in travel photography, uh, editors will always say a destination is not a story. That's just a starting point. It's like say, oh, I'm going to Japan, I'm going to China. Then you have to delve in and say, okay, now that I am uh, you know, want to work in China, what's going on now? What's going on six months from now? Because there's always lead time with magazines. Just like with uh, the Los Angeles Times Magazine, I pitched a story on life the long life along the demilitarized zone between North Korea and South Korea. And I pitched that story a few months before the 50th anniversary of the signing of the armistice. If I came up with the idea two weeks before, uh, it might be an interesting idea, but it's too late. Uh, maybe for somebody shooting for Associated Press for a newspaper thing can, you know, get a shot and it can run the next day, but magazines have a lead time. So you have to think way in advance of, of their timing to get the photo idea kicked around uh, the office and to get it signed off on. So, so the key is to, to, to uh, for beginning people, is to, to just get out and shoot, see what they're into, start loosely putting portfolios together, keep refining, be a tough editor. You know, just don't, you know, shoot and think, oh, this is great, this is great, this is great. But really take a look. And also, I think a very important thing to do is, is to go to galleries, to go to bookstores, constantly looking at what's out there. You know, do your homework at, at the magazine stands. You know, get a couple of subscriptions to photo magazines and other magazines. See what else is being done out there. And also, I think enter contests as well is always good. And then you're seeing who else is doing what, what wins, what doesn't. And it's arbitrary, and, and, and don't get frustrated if you don't win a contest because you know, it's 
it's arbitrary. You know, it's it's uh, one person might like your shot, another person doesn't get it. But maybe it's a brilliant shot. And, uh, a few years from now, it will you know be one of the top selling images you have. You you just never know. Cool. I understand that you're going to be um, doing some more classes at Sammy's. Um, what are they going to entail, and when can we expect them? Yeah. Well, for sure, in 2010, we'll do another travel photography class, and, and I had so much fun working with Sammy's for the first time uh, doing the last one. And uh, we'll be doing a, a series of, of uh, chats with famous photographers, uh, uh, monthly chats uh, down at Brookmont Station, and uh, Sammy's is uh, sponsoring, and I'll be the host for that. So I'm very excited about sitting on stage and exploring uh, the photographs and, and uh, the ideas and the people behind uh, the great photographs uh, that are being produced today and, and with, with some of the people we're going to have coming up like Douglas Kirkland and uh, Herman Leonard, people that really put a face on the 20th century and uh, here are those images came about and their approaches. So Robert, thank you so much for having me on. This is great and I, I wish uh, luck to everybody who's out there. Photography, um, you know, we're, we're so fortunate you know, the people living before 1823 didn't have the opportunity to, uh, to really experience the, the magic of photography. You know, they had to draw everything. But now, it, it's never been easier to, to take great photos, and, and maybe in a sense it's never been easier to take lousy photos because of all this equipment. So I, I wish for your students to take great photos and to experiment, be tough editors, get rid of the ones that don't work, uh, really look at the whole frame, not just their subjects when they're shooting, and uh, just to get out and keep exploring the world. Fantastic. Good. Thank you. Okay, you got it. Excellent. Thank you very much. Robert. Thank you. I appreciate Thank it. You. I appreciate it uh, yeah. on this side too. So. All right, and that was uh, our first interview. Um, I think it was amazing. I'm going to be bringing a lot more. Um, Mark has actually uh, interviewed more people than anyone on this planet, uh, more photographers. He, that's part of his job. He's a contributing editor and writer for a number of uh, photo magazines. So he goes, you know, and interviews uh, some of the most amazing photographers of all time. And um, so he's going to help me get uh, my foot in the door with a few of these people. And, you know, there's going to be a lot more um, of these interviews coming up. It should be an amazing series. I'm excited about it. It's amazing to me. Um, you know, I'm still getting settled into the, the idea that uh, this is what I'm going to be doing for a while now. So, uh, again, thanks, Sammy's. Um, you know, if you're interested, if you're if you're enjoying these, um, you know, give Sammy's a little bit of thanks by um, buying something from him. So, um, you know, go online, Sammy's.com, uh, for any of your little photography needs, big photography needs. And, uh, you know, show Sammy that, uh, you know, you appreciate his help. I know I do. And, uh, you know, if you appreciate mine, it's coming through there. So, uh, you know. Do your thing and, uh, you know, check our little link right about there and, uh, you know, you can go to sammys.com and, and check it out. So thank you very much for watching and I hope you learned something.